Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good? How's the rain this morning? <laughs> Fabulous, right? So warm, right? Weather, right? Why don't you just go around, you know, and give a high five to one another? Amen? Like 
Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and reverence, seeking your divine presence and guidance. We acknowledge that you are the source of all wisdom and understanding. We pray for your guidance and empowerment upon all of our lives, especially our teachers, for they play an important role in imparting the knowledge and the wisdom that they have into the future generations, what needs to be learned and what needs to be applied, that they need to know and differentiate the difference of what is right and wrong. For the world today is going into a direction with more wickedness. Hence, there need to be more righteous teachers and teachers filled with the wisdom of God and, the Holy, and let the Holy Spirit guide every teacher in this place to teach the word so that the children and the generations in the future will live by the word as they play a very important role in shaping the lives of the students Lord I pray that you will grant them strength and wisdom so that they themselves will be empowered by you to know how to teach and what to teach and Lord I, ble- I pray that you will bless these educators with patience as well to inspire these students and also their children and also instill good values. Grant them discernment to understand the unique needs of each child under their care and may they be filled with compassion, grace and a genuine love for those entrusted to them. As we lift our voices, O Lord, in prayer, we pray that we also, we pray for healing to be upon those who are sick and who are suffering. I pray, Lord Father, may you restore whatever that is hurting in their minds or in their bodies, O Lord, whether it be the sickness of um, body illness or mental illness. We ask for your merciful intervention, comforting those who are unwell, bringing healing to their bodies, minds and spirits. May your healing power flow through their veins, providing strength, resilience and renewed hope. Furthermore, Lord, we recognize that all that we have is a gift from you. You have blessed us abundantly and we now bring our offerings and tithes before you. May these acts of giving be a reflection of our gratitude and trust in your provision. Bless these offerings and multiply them for the advancement of your kingdom, enabling ministries and outreach programs to impact lives and spread your love. In everything we do, may we be guided by your divine wisdom, inspired by your love and empowered by your spirit. We offer this prayer with sincere hearts, knowing that you hear our cries and answer according to your perfect will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. For those of you who are watching online, you can scan the QR code that has been provided for you to pay your tithes and offerings. Thank you. Welcome back to Sarang Hey FM. It's already 9.30 p.m. on a Tuesday, so you know what time it is? Yes, exactly! It's time for Spill Tea with me. Who is me? Auntie Ling Our first caller is already on the line. Hi, Brandon. You're on air. Come, tell Auntie Ling. What's your story? Wow, wow, girlfriend always eat and then get fat and then ask you and you tell her she's fat. Of course, 
Auntie Ling tell you, just eat together la. Eat together, get fat together. No need to comment anything. Okay, our next caller is a lady. Angel baby, come tell me what's your tea. Oh no, so drama one uh, your mother-in-law. Auntie Ling tell you, both of you go watch Korean drama together and keep the drama there. And our last caller for tonight is Madam Tan. Hi Madam Tan, come tell me sister, what's your story? Oh, your so so daughter in law is Angel Baby, Praise the Lord. Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord to worship God. You have braved the rains and still made it here to worship the Almighty One. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you here. You really made a special effort. Yeah, you could have slept in. No, you've got to give a reason why you cannot be here, but you are still here in the house of the Lord. Bless God. Praise the Lord. We are, this, we have two more weeks for the, church, the CHAM registration. So um, quickly register downstairs at the counter with William and the rest of the deacons that are there that will assist you. Right? Um, it is just for three days and two nights and we'll be able to go to Kampa and uh, have a lot of fellowship and uh, also, you know, there are varieties of food over there. Uh, as we have invited Reverend Philip Matthews and Reverend Finehas Matthews both father and son who are, you know, are credential members, ordained credential members of Assemblies of God, and they will be ministering. So it would be great to see a father and son team uh, minister to us. So especially for those who are young people, that's why we invited a young minister, right, to speak to you, and I hope that you would sign up. Amen. Right, um, today is the third day of the prayer and fasting the 10-day prayer and fasting that will culminate on, um, what is that, Pentecost Sunday next week. So what is Pentecost Sunday? Just a brief idea. It is a day where the Holy Spirit fell on the group of believers that were gathering together in the upper room, and they were filled with the Spirit of God, speaking with tongues, and they were praising the Lord. And it gave them great power. Right, so next week is that uh, particular day. Remember what happened more than 2,000 years ago. Why I want to tell you that beforehand is that so that you be prepared. If you have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, I want you to come with hearts hungering and say, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit, right? Fill me with your anointing and your power. Fill me so that I can become an effective witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. So you come. And I believe that there will be a great outpouring. Many brothers and sisters have been fasting. They have been praying. And um, there will be a special meeting on Friday night and a Saturday night over Zoom. And uh, there is uh, Apostle Jim Riley, right? They will be ministering. Get on to the Zoom link early because I don't know how many spaces they have. Uh, what is that? Booked. It may be 500. It may be 1,000 but it's open to all the Assemblies of God churches in Malaysia. So there will be many people who will be logging in from different parts of this country 
and uh, make sure you have a place in that particular room. Amen. Praise God. Right, um, before we continue on the service, we have a, a young group of students from UCSI Christian Fellowship. They are here to minister to us two songs. And uh, you would not be able to recognize any one of them except one, and that's Melanie. Right, so a um, c- couple of weeks ago, they asked you know, whether they can use our church uh, facility for their practice for the upcoming worship night that they are going to have in UCSI. Uh, they were willing to, you know, uh, it says, you know, uh, what is it, book the room and so forth. Then it says, never mind about that, you use the room. I only have one request, right? What you present there, give us a sample of what you did in worship unto the Lord. And so here they are. Um, I asked them if they have group, have a name. They have none, but they say that these are the Christian Fellowship students from UCSI. We ask them to come right now. Hi everyone, I'm Melanie. So this is my team. Uh, we are from the UCSI University just here. Yeah, just very near to here, like five minutes. So this is the Christian Fellowship Group. So uh, yeah, thank you Pastor Eris and the church for lending us uh, a place for practices for our uh, previous praise and worship night. So today, uh, yeah, we want to perform, present you two songs, used to this, and another one is Joy in the Morning. So if you know the song, uh, please worship and sing together with us.
carry so many sorrows in our lives, in our daily lives, but there is joy every single morning. Everything happens for a reason, but I don't know what I don't know. And we never have peace if we don't let go of tomorrow. Cause it ain't even fit that your plan falls apart, and we still choose to follow. Then 
Thank you. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is, and salvation is free. But it cost the Son of God's, uh, Son of God's sacrifice on the cross. So likewise, today's keyboard workshop is also free, but it's not cheap. <laughs> yes. Very quickly, um, we are... Uh, due, due to the uh, response, okay, we are cancelling the Kung Fu Master level. We're only having the intermediate level at 11 and it goes all the way down to 1 p.m. So just bring your pens, your pencils, notes will be given. And the beginner will be at 1.30. See you there. We hope to have a great session. Thank you. Thanks, Timothy. You realize that Timothy is wearing a little bit more modern T-shirt and uh, shirt outside hanging. Right, the keyboard teacher has to look like that. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, I signed up for a Kung Fu level. He say I cannot. I didn't have the right haircut. Remember? <laughs> he refused to let me in the Kung Fu level. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for the students from UCSI for bringing us those two songs. And uh, at the same time, I, I believe that there was someone else upstairs that was doing the projectionist. I was told that, yeah. So you saw eight of them there, but there was also one upstairs there um, taking care of the slides. Um, not, as I said, no, we thank the Lord for them to... They come from different churches coming together to uh, minister at their praise and worship night in UCSI. So thank you for coming. And at the same time, I was surprised, you know, when I went there to greet them. They handed me an envelope. They said, nevertheless, this is an offering for the church. They didn't have to. I told them it was free for them to get the room, right? Uh, but they nevertheless uh, blessed the church. So thank you so much. Okay? <laughs> Amen. Right, today we have Reverend Daniel Law uh, to be with us. It's together with his wife, Sister Karen. Uh, they are looking uh, very, very relaxed right now, okay, uh, for a specific reason. They've been ministering for many years, faithfully in different churches, and then being senior pastors of uh, Canaan Church in Hatamas. And just recently, he has retired from the church, and the wife also has retired from a secular job, right? and so they are uh, free as a bird. But it says, no, they are here to minister the word of the Lord with us. And... Um, we thank God that He has been faithful in the ministry, running the race, and now handing the baton to another pastor who has taken the church already. Uh, we are so glad for that, to know that the transition has been very smooth. And so we rejoice together with Him, and uh, He is open, and uh, He wants you know, to see what's the next step that the Lord has for Him to take, right? So we are glad for you to be here, both uh, Reverend Daniel Lowe and Sister Karen Liu, and has brought a friend to be with us also. Right, from JB, right? Um, so we welcome you as well. Can we put our hands together to welcome <laughs> Reverend Daniel Lowe? Thank you, Pastor Aries, uh, for this uh, kind invitation and uh, introduction of uh, me and my wife. And uh, as he has mentioned, that I have retired. And uh, many people were shocked. What? You have retired? How old are you? <laughs> you know, and I just felt that the Lord is leading me to a so-called early retirement from my church. I'm not retired, uh, though I retired from pastoring in a sense, but I'm not retiring from ministry. I hope you understand that. And I do not know where the Lord is going to lead me. I just uh, take a short break at this moment and uh, trust the Lord, you know, whatever it is the Lord is leading, uh, just keep on 
uh, hearing his voice that is very, very important. And uh, so it's uh, very interesting at this moment. And uh, in terms of taking a short break, you know, there are some mixed feelings. Uh, early morning is always uh, looking forward to go to church and all of a sudden, hey, I'm not going back to the church, you know, and where am I going? But these are some of those feelings, but really it's a joy to be here uh, in Praise City Church and uh, worshipping together with all of you. Our God is a good God. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Those of you who are joining online, we trust that you can also shout aloud amen unto the Lord because the presence of God is also where you are. And uh, so we are here together in His presence. I pray that within the time uh, that we have today, that the Lord is going to speak to you, the Lord is going to challenge you. And I think that if I'm not mistaken, your, your theme for this year is courage. Is that? I am courage, you know, from this great verse. Uh, God has not given me a spirit of timidity, but really, you know, self-control, a sound mind, talking about courageous act that we need to do as a believer of Jesus Christ. Now today, I'm going to bring you into a time where during the time of Jesus Christ. You know, many of us, uh, I pray that uh, you, have, you have understood, you have heard, and you have seen, you have read the Scriptures, uh, many things that our Lord Jesus Christ has done that is especially on miracles. All of us enjoy seeing miracles, isn't it? All of us are looking forward to signs and wonders. But I'd like to draw your attention this morning, bringing back through this altar by the name of John, uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Next week is Pentecost Sunday. Uh, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I pray that you will do so. I'll share with you shortly after it. And uh, I want you to bring you back to, to this America of a man born blind. And uh, we're going to look into the video right now. It's taken from John chapter 9. And uh, I'd like you to just uh, visualize. Uh, let's travel back to the time of Jesus Christ and understand this story uh, before we carry on. John chapter 9 taken uh, from verses 1 to 11. It's all right. Sometimes things like this happen. Yeah? I'm sure they are able to uh, just ratify it. Uh, we'll come back shortly afterward, right? Uh, yeah, so it's not an issue. And uh, now, before it, it comes back again, just to let you know, there's a scenario over here. Uh, this is, t is referring to how the Lord Jesus Christ uh, healed this man who was born blind. Uh, once he comes back, and in fact, in the book of John, uh, you realize that he actually specifically uh, he wrote, actually, there are seven miracles that the Lord Jesus Christ has performed, and there are reasons, there are so many in the Gospels, but yet when you read the Gospel of John, uh, there are seven specific miracles uh, the Holy Spirit has given him and he has penned it down for us to understand there are purposes, there are reasons for us. And uh, so this is one of them. Uh, very interesting uh, how we are able to learn uh, many lessons even from this miracle itself. All right.
Sometimes it's good without sound. It's a silent movie, but you need to look at the scripture, isn't it? No worries, just, just carry on looking at the, uh, the video and also the, uh, the scriptures. Uh, it will really help you to recollect this entire story. Got a sound? Okay. Okay, I hope you understand and have just uh, seen this story. It's fine. Huh? You can go back and read John chapter 9, verse 1 to 11, talking about how the Lord Jesus healed this man who was born blind. And in the midst of this entire story, you, you realize that there's one uh, particular verse, and I pray that this will help us, uh, reminding us the urgency and the importance of reaching out to those who have yet to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And in this John's retelling of the story, one of the statements that Jesus actually has made, He says, We must work the works of Him who sent me as long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. The sharing of my message today is entitled, Now is the time. Now is the time. We do have the slides that will be shown shortly afterward. You know, it's very interesting as you look into the world's uh, population right now that under the uh, United Nations uh, population uh, census last year itself, that it has actually reached 8 billion people. 8 billion people. And uh, in that statistics uh, that they have shown last year itself, uh, last year, during the end of last year, where as far as China is concerned, it is still, China is, has the most popular, uh, in fact, it's the, the country that has the most, uh, is the most populated country. But yet, this year, if you look into this chart, uh, this year itself, where Ch India has recently, in April, if you know, re India has recently taken over China as the world's most populated country. And in fact, when you look into this, very interesting that more than half the growth, this is a projection of world's population, 
that you and I will see in the next 30 years, uh, what will happen is that there will be more uh, population growth, in, particularly in eight countries, Congo, Egypt, Ethiopia, India, Nigeria, Pakistan, Philippines and Tanzania. Probably you know some of the people uh, who are from this country. And even though COVID has affected many lives for the past three years, but yet as far as the population growth is concerned, it is ongoing. And as it is ongoing, we as a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, our primary purpose as a church, our importance as a believer of Jesus Christ is always so winning. Can somebody say amen? Uh, that you and I are here today by the grace and the mercy of God. And I pray that our heart's desire, our fire to reach out the loss uh, will always intact, will always be strong, that we will have the courage to reach out what Whatever it is that God, by the grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit, will give us that urgency, will give us the strength, uh, will give us the, the understanding that people need the Lord. In fact, in Malaysia itself, uh, under the Department of Statistics, uh, Malaysia, just last year, July 2022, uh, our population in Malaysia now is estimated to the 2.7 million. And in Selangor itself, it's 7, uh, it's 7 million. And Kuala Lumpur is 2 million. Now here, in this story, Jesus, really, He is challenging us through this miracle of the blind man that people need the Lord. That's why He says we must work the works of God as long as it is day, night is coming when no one can work. Now is the time. Simply speaks of the urgency of the matter. It's a kairos time. And I pray that we're going to learn. There are three powerful lessons I'd like to share with you within the time that we have uh, this morning. And I pray that the Holy Spirit uh, will give you that revelation, will help you to understand and will challenge every one of us here today to rise up and to go up and to reach out to those who have yet to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There are three powerful lessons. Firstly is that the misery of darkness calls for a serious attention. I repeat, the misery of darkness calls for a serious attention. Now, this man, he is blind. He's not only blind, the Bible tells us very clearly that this man, he is born blind. Now, we thank God that you and I today, that we have sight that we're able to enjoy life and able to see and look around. But poor guy, this guy is in misery. He's born blind. And when you talk about colors, he doesn't know what, what is blue. He doesn't know what is red. He doesn't know what are the primary and secondary colors. You can mention to him, to him is everything is just darkness. He has never seen how parents look like. He has not seen what's, what is rainbow. And this is part and puzzle of people who are living in darkness spiritually. Misery of darkness of this man is so real. As I say, never seen a sunset, the face of a child, face of a loved one like his parents, and he's always in a state of darkness. You know, friends, there are many people today are still in this misery of darkness. Not necessarily physically that they are blind, but overall, they are in this condition where they are not set free. It might be a physical disempowerment. It might be their mental torture in their life. And they are always in darkness. And they're trying to find a solution. But the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And all of us know very well that in this world, 
until and unless the light of the world, that is Jesus Christ, who has given them that light, that they will be set free from spiritual darkness. Everyone is in this state. We thank God that you and I are here today is because God has opened our eyes. Somebody say amen. And if you are sitting here today, you are still wondering, you are still searching and looking for the truth, I pray that at the end of the service, that you say, yes, Lord, I want to receive this light, that I will, my eyes will be open, my heart will attend to you and understand that how good and how loving you are. You know, the second lessons that we can learn today, not only the misery of darkness that really calls for a serious attention, but the other lesson we can learn here today is that the miracle of light calls for a sovereign act. The miracle of light calls for a sovereign act. You know, true spiritual light will be found nowhere else but in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. This blind man, he has never imagined in his life that there will be this man, Jesus, passing by and that day will be a day of miracle in his life. Can you imagine, parents especially, of course, they will be very joyful when a child is born, first child, and it's a son. Everybody rejoice. Is it, a, is it a boy? Yes, it's a boy. Wow, everybody, hallelujah. Maybe they say, wow. But then after that, they realized the baby is blind. Can you imagine how devastating it will be for parents' first child? And I'm sure you must be wondering, what happened? What happened? Lord, what happened if they are believers? If they're not a believer, say, how come? Why? You know, very interesting that in this passage, in John chapter 9, Jesus was passing by together with the disciples, and the blind man was sitting there daily, of course. It's like part of, his, part of it, where he's actually asking for arms and asking for help, for money, for his daily provision and food. Because he's in a state of blindness, definitely he is poor as well. The disciples, together with the Jesus passing by, and it's very interesting, of all the things that G the disciples ask, Master or Rabbi or Lord, who sinned? Now they come into a theological discussion instead of having a heart of compassion for the blind man. But they say, Master, who sinned right in front of the, that blind man? In fact, that blind man is already in a state of devastation. He's blind. But yet, the disciples added more salt into that and bring condemnation. Master, who sinned? Is it this guy or his parents? Come on, man. What are you saying? You mean there's something wrong with me and something wrong with my parents? I'm sure that guy really felt terrible at that moment. But Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents. But this happens so that the works of God can be displayed or God can be glorified. You see, we have to understand the context over here. In the understanding of Jewish belief is that whenever there, somebody has a physical disability or uh, impairment, it, has, it is related to sin. That's it. That's why in Job itself, all the three guys, uh, his good friends, are saying, Job, you better confess, you better repent, there's something wrong with you. But yet, here again, all of them have that understanding. Even the disciples, straight away, it's already there is a conclusion. Who sinned? Is it him or is it the parents? Can you imagine how sad it is for parents? Oh, why my child is born blind? Is it because of us that something that we have done? Yes, probably uh, sometimes it can happen, but not necessarily so. And we have to understand this. But yet that's where the Bible tells us, and Jesus came 
to unfold, to correct this misunderstanding, a wrong teaching of the Jewish people. And this is where it is. You know, Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents. But this happens so that the works of God can be displayed. You know, friends, we have to understand that as far as sin, as far as suffering, as far as uh, disability in life, whether we are a believer or not a believer, all of us, we will be confronted with sufferings and there'll be times with disability. Somebody say amen. Of course, suffering is not a good time to say amen. But hey, that's a reality of life, isn't it? Right? Even though we can be so pious or we are so committed and coming to church and we get involved, oh, when I tell you, we are really, you know, devoted 100%, undivided in our heart, loving God, loving people. But yet, how? How come? How come there will be times where, boom, sufferings came into us? Things happen to family members that we cannot understand. And how do we respond to sufferings? How do we respond to disability as a believer of the Jesus Christ? If, there is, if suffering has no meaning, then there's no meaning in life. And we have to understand that we need to learn when sufferings and disability come upon us. Then when we relate it to God, there will be meaning. We will begin to appreciate the goodness of God at the end and the grace of God and the higher purposes of God that we do not understand at all. Are you still here with me? Uh, these are all the things that will confront us. Likewise, for those who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, these are all the things that can happen to humanity. But yet all of us, if today we are a believer of the Jesus Christ, then how do we respond when it comes to suffering? How do we respond when it comes to disability? Like the parents over here, I'm sure, especially for, for the mother of this child when he was carrying this baby and realized that the child was blind. I'm sure she cries out to God, say, God, why? Why? Of all the people, why us? Why me? I'm sure it is very hurting, isn't it? And she will keep on asking. And probably today, there are many people. Yes, in this modern world, they have a child probably. But yet, probably the child is, also has some physical disability. Autistic kid. Some hyperactive. Some disabled. Some are mute, deaf and dumb. And they were wondering why. And there might be a lot of questions in, in them. Could it be me? Could it be my husband? Could it be something wrong that we have done? Lord, what is it? And I pray that all of us will not condemn ourselves. I pray that all of us will understand and come to the grace and the presence of God where we cry out to the Lord. You know, the miracle of light really calls for a sovereign act. And even though we are a believer for many years, there will be times in our life where sufferings will come to us. It never ends, isn't it, right? We do not want it, but yet it comes to us. And the worst time is that, Lord, why of all these things? We as a Christian, that doesn't mean that the more we are devoted, oh, you know, the Holy Spirit will guide us, will protect us, we are going to have great health. Hey, in reality of life, things can happen. But when things happen, how do we respond? I think that is very, very important for us as a believer of the Jesus Christ. You know, how we respond, people will see. If we respond the same as others who do not know the Lord, then there's no difference, isn't it? There's no difference. If we really believe that our God loves us, we believe that our God understands everything in our life, if he says that I am the light of the world, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. If this is what we believe, if this is the God that we worship, if this is the, the one that we have been singing all this while today and keep on proclaiming, then we must understand. We must keep on crying out to the sovereign act of God. 
I have a church member. Five years ago, he was, uh, he was diagnosed having lung cancer. Of course, we as a church, we pray for him, uh, believing for miracle. And uh, we, we lay hands, we pray for him, we comfort him, we counsel him. And uh, thank God, through the grace of God, in fact, uh, to cut the whole thing short, is that, that he live on. He live on. And uh, five years, you know, and according to doctor, he hey, that is really good, you know, for a cancer patient. You know, living for five years is more than five years. It's like a miracle. And uh, for his old age, you know, it's, uh, he said, there's no way I'm going to go through chemotherapy because it will really kill him even faster. So he did not go for chemotherapy. Uh, he went for, yes, chemo pills and other alternative treatment by himself. And uh, by the grace of God, you know, he, he was, he's well and uh, able to live on for more than five years. We thank God, you know, it's like a miracle. Every day is a miracle. Every day is a bonus in his life, you know. And, uh, but just recently, just recently, uh, somehow he was diagnosed that, hey, this cancer is now slowly eating up his body. And uh, it was devastating. In fact, this year itself, uh, we are really praying now. We are still praying for him and uh, for God to do something in his life. You know, the cancer already eating up part of his bones and, uh, and he was not able to, to, to walk right now. Uh, but the great thing is that during that that period itself, uh, that was in February after his birthday in March, uh, just recently, you know, and uh, went for went for checkup. He realized that it's really uh, not good. Uh, you know, when he was in the hospital, uh, he cried out to the Lord. We pray for him as a church. He cried out to the Lord. Really, it's like the doctor already said, "Well, uh, we are not going to give you any medicine anymore." So the wife, uh, you can take him home and uh, provide him with good quality life and let him enjoy life. Now, when you hear that, you know what it is. Your time is coming up very soon. Whatever he wants to eat, let him eat. Let me enjoy. He heard this, of course, very sad, devastated, like the, the man born blind. Who sinned? Parents or him? You know, and he was so con he was condemned. In, I mean, he was sad, uh, feeling bad, and Lord, my time is up. You know, and on that night in the hospital, he cried out to the Lord. He really cried out. He cried out. He said, God, I need a miracle. God, I need you a miracle. And interestingly is that, you know, five years ago, the wife gave him a song. Uh, he said, listen to this song to comfort him when he was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, God will make a way when there's no other way. You know, by Don Juan, everybody knows this song, isn't it, right? And uh, to him, he said, come on, what, what song is this? You know, what way, no way. <laughs> you know, uh, and he doesn't bother about it. Yet, in his time of desperation, on that night, the Holy Spirit just dropped that song into his heart and he texts the wife, Hey, remember the song you, you, you gave, you know, what, what way, what way, you know? And uh, the wife remember and text that song on YouTube, you know, when he listens to that song, he cried. It's like the Holy Spirit just visit him, you know? And uh, on Saturday morning, uh, my wife and I, we went to the hospital in Putrajaya. Uh, we prayed for him. We lay hands. You know what happened? The moment I lay hands on him, we lay hands on him, he bursts out speaking in tongues. Just like that. And the tears flowing, and I know the Holy Spirit is touching him. You know, we pray for healing, and we just let it be. And after the whole prayer, after the whole prayer, and then he uh, settled down, you know, calm, and then he shared, you know, Pastor, uh, yesterday night while I was, uh, I was really, he said, you know, I was, devastated. I cry out to God and uh, I do not know it's like the end of my life. I'm really crying out for the miracle, for the sovereign act of God. He said, at that moment when I listened to the song, God will make a way. All of a sudden, I spoke in tongues. Now, he believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
But he's a bit skeptical in terms of speaking in tongues. What is this babbling? What is this? You know, to him is this is nonsense. But yet, by the grace of God, he was baptized in the Holy Spirit at a time when he needs help. Somebody say amen. You know, that's why when on that Saturday morning, uh, when we, I, we lay hands and pray, the Holy Spirit just baptized him again. You know, energize him when we saw him. You know, he looked fresh. He, he looks very confident. And he shared, you know, and I, I explained to him, the Holy Spirit empower you during this time of crisis, during this time of difficulties, to strengthen your inner body, to strengthen you and to confirm to you that God loves you. God is with you. You know, the Holy Spirit is doing that work. It's amazing. It's amazing that during that time itself, until today, we are still praying for Him. Uh, one of the miracles, I will say, one of the miracles for His condition is until today, He doesn't feel any pain. He doesn't feel any pain at all. Every day is a bonus. We are still praying for Him for miracle. We are still believing, but yet He, is, he has the courage you know, uh, he believes in God, he trusts the Lord, whatever it is, he's still praying for the miracle in his life. And, uh, you know, friends, this simply tells us that in our life, calling to God for a sovereign act is not a one time event. In the journey of our Christian life, there will be times where we cry out to the Lord. And when we cry out, let us by faith believe that our God. He hears our prayer. Our God, He knows. He has compassion. He feels for us. The first time when we pray, He has already heard our prayer. Can somebody say amen? And I pray that you and I today, we will be encouraged. There are many lessons that we are able to learn. And everyone needs to realize that only God can take any life, regardless of how that life has been ruined whether it's by sin or whether by a, phys a physical condition, but we just need to trust the Lord. Our God is our provider. Our God is our, he he is our healer. He is really the light of the world. And the miracle of light really calls for a sovereign act. And I pray that today uh, you will be encouraged. Whatever situation in life, do not give up. Keep praying. Keep trusting the Lord. You know, our God loves us. And final lesson, when in, time, in line with the harvest and talking about the importance that people need the Lord, the message of salvation calls for a swift action. Yeah. You know, pandemic has just left us, in a sense, three years. But probably some of you, you are able to share stories of how loved ones has actually affected by COVID, they are no longer around. I have friends that they are no longer around. I, I, I'm not able to see them anymore. It's devastating. And some that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Sad, isn't it? That three years itself, during the first year, I know many people, they pray. There are many people who cried out and we are able to see, oh, it's really devastating. Some friends they are not even able to see the one, the parents or the father or the mother who passed away. They cannot see them. Why? Because of COVID. Not able to attend funeral. Terrible. Not able to come back from overseas. Terrible. And these are all the things that are happening. But at the end of the day is that, hey, we ask as a believer, is there still hope in the Lord Jesus Christ? And I pray that you and I today will see the urgency that people need the Lord. Everybody is walking around right now as if COVID is over, but it's not over yet, right? It's, it's walking around as if that, hey, everything is back to normal. Just enjoy life. Just keep on making money. You know, just do whatever we want. But yet, without realizing the importance of the spiritual world, the importance of our spiritual life. At the end of the day, our destiny is meeting the Master. That everyone needs to know this person the Lord Jesus Christ. Very interestingly is that, you know, the Jesus who passed by, just passed by, and this blind man, he has never imagined in his life that that day is a day of miracle, 
That day is a day of salvation in his life. And Jesus did not just tell him, hey, do you believe in me? If you believe, then I will heal you. Jesus did not say that. But Jesus healed him first, doesn't it? Jesus has touched him, healed him, and then that's it. But yet this man, you know, Yes, miraculously he was healed and uh, wow, you can see the video just now, you know, who went to the marketplace. Wow, he looked around, you know, first time in his life looking at vegetables, he doesn't know what all this, all these things, looking at all the fruits, you know, everything is, the excitement level is there when the light came upon him. The excitement level is there when salvation came upon him. Wow, it's really a miracle, it's a day of miracle in his life. But yet, there are many people who condemn him. You know, why? Because especially the Pharisees, you know, telling him, you know, who? Who heal you? Why? Because he was healed during the Sabbath. And they're trying to condemn him and all these things. But probably Jesus realized that Jesus was actually at, uh, at, uh, behind the scene and looking at all those people who are condemning him. Hey, this guy is already healed. He's able to see. But yet they condemn him saying that, no, you know, this, that must be, that guy must be, a, you know, all these are heresies. No way. And, uh, but yet... After all these things, Jesus approached him. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Son of Man? And all these things, to end the story, if you go back and read, he says, who is this man? And Jesus says, he's the one who is talking to you right now. He says, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Not only that, so many things that we can learn there. And later, he says, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped the Lord. You know, friends, salvation comes upon us. We say, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. But it doesn't end over there. Healing comes upon our life. We say, hallelujah, God is our healer. You know, when we are set free, when God blesses us with financial blessing, when God gave us a good job, when things are happening good, you know, when, when students are have, uh, having good results and God... God has every enabled you, you know, have uh, good results and, uh, and uh, you're able to go through an, another round or uh, in, a, in the area of uh, academics. But yet, at the end of the day is, do we give glory to God? And this person who was born blind, the Bible tells us that he said, Lord, I believe. Lord, simply acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the Son of Man. And Lord, I believe. Not only that, He worshipped the Lord. You know, it's so important in our daily lives that we must always have a heart of worship. Somebody say, Amen. And we are so thankful to see and encourage the young people, college students, university students, you know, from UCSI, they have a night of worship together. And I pray that all of us will always have the heart of worship in us. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not just coming here and then we worship after when we go out, there's nothing else. The act of worship follows us every second of our life. Somebody say amen. And this is where it is. There's so many lessons that we learn over here. But the message of salvation really calls for a swift action. That's why Jesus says we must work the works of Him who sent us. Night is coming. Night is coming. Time is short. You say, oh, maybe tomorrow, maybe next day I will do it. There's so many things that are happening in this world that we do not know. We do not know. That all of a sudden, it's just overnight. Hoop. In fact, uh, two weeks ago, uh, very quickly, I know time is already up. You know, two weeks ago, I was preaching in Johor Bahru. And uh, we did hiking together with the pastor over there. And uh, just to help us to... Uh, stay healthy, you know, and, uh, and he tortured us by three-hour hiking, and then after that on Monday, six-hour hiking. Uh, very, very challenging, but we survived. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the hikers that we went along, uh, Church of Praise, Johor Bahru, uh, on Wednesday, we heard that one of them, uh, he went home to be with the Lord. We were shocked. He was hiking with us, you know, and uh, he looks very healthy, but yet, for whatever reasons, the Lord took him home. And uh, Pastor Michael, you uh, texted me, hey, you know, Richard, uh, he had a heart attack. And uh, he went on with the Lord. All of us were shocked. What happened? But yet, these are things that happen. 
The ch- children were surprised, were shocked. The whole church was shocked. Uh, we were shocked. Why? Because uh, we really look forward to see him again. But yet, all these things happen. You know, we cannot underestimate or we cannot plan or we cannot, in a sense, foresee what can happen in the future. We can be enjoying life today, but tomorrow we might not be able to see some of our family members or good friends. That's why here, the urgency of the matter is the message of salvation calls for a swift action. We pray that you and I, that God will give us uh, the Holy Spirit, the bonus, the courage to go out and share the gospel. Don't worry, oh, I'm not able to do this, I do not know how. Just trust the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, Amen. Plant a seed and the Holy Spirit will do the work. In conclusion, in conclusion, finally, you know, I came from a very big family. Ten is a football team. In fact, plus nephews and niece, we can have three teams, you know. And uh, yeah, five guys, five girls. I'm the youngest, you know. And, uh, and uh, now, of course, ten in the family. Wow! Praying that everybody will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. My sister, uh, her name is Mary. Interestingly, is for whatever reasons, what I heard is that my grandfather gave her the name Mary. No Chinese name. That's all. <laughs> no Chinese name. You know, when she got married, of course, they put, you know, uh, Chinese name is what? No Chinese name. <laughs> Mary Lo. That's it. L-O-H. And uh, do you know what? I don't think it's a coincidence. She was the first in our family, uh, amongst our siblings, the first who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Then after that, followed by my brothers and sisters, and then later us. And, uh, but there's one more that is my eldest sister. And uh, just 19, uh, 2019, uh, April, uh, we have been praying very hard. I always believe that uh, me and our household, we will be safe. I claim on the promises of God. We prayed, you know, and uh, see parents come to know the Lord. And then after that, one after another. But yet my elder sister, uh, quite some time, uh, because uh, she married my, my late brother-in-law. And of course, it's not easy, you know, uh, though it's a non-believer. We pray for them. And, uh, but yet, you see uh, the fruits coming. And uh, after the passing of my brother-in-law, you know what? Just in 2019, April, my elder sister accepted the Lord. That was the last one. And she got baptized in the church and we said, Lord, thank you. Lord, thank you. Thank you. And there's so many things that are happening in her life. Miracles happening after she accepted the Lord Jesus. So many exciting things uh, happen. But I thank God. You know, friends, I know time is up. Uh, This is the conclusion. Many things. But I pray that this morning that you will see that importance. Why? Because in summary, the misery of darkness really calls for a serious attention, the miracle of light calls for a sovereign act, and the message of salvation calls for a swift action. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. You know, as every eyes close and every head is bowed, there are three categories of people I'd like to share today, the challenge. The first is what, if you are here first time, if you have yet to know the Lord Jesus Christ, And I pray that uh, you will respond to the Lord. I pray they say, Lord, I don't understand everything in life. Things are happening to me. But today I realize that you are a good God. And I wanted to respond to you. That you will come into my life. You know, if you are one of those who want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, very easy. All you need to do is just uh, follow after me. I'm going to pray shortly. All you need to do is just pray. You know, it's an ABC prayer. You know, I accept, I believe, I confess. That's it. And uh, by doing so, then you become a child of God. Very easy. You just follow after me if you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You say, Lord Jesus, I accept you. That you are the Son of God. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for me on the cross. Lord Jesus, I repent and I confess my sin. Come into my life. I want to receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name. You know, friends, 
If you are one of those who have accepted the Lord Jesus, even for those who are joining online, you are over there, you are whispering in your heart, uh, pray this very simple prayer, you are now a child of God. You are now a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, those of you, if you are here today, you have accepted the Lord, tell your neighbours or tell your friends, tell one of the, uh, the leaders over here, they say, I have accepted the Lord Jesus and they were able to guide you and help you uh, in the journey of your Christian faith. But there are two more categories very quickly is that maybe some of you here uh, that you have been praying for your spouse, you have been praying for family members uh, to come to know the Lord Jesus. Maybe some of you have been praying for five years. Some of you have been praying for 10 years. But I want to tell you today, do not give up. If God is able to save my family, God is able to save your spouse, your children, and your family. There's no favoritism. God loves everyone. And He loves your family. And you say, Lord, I need you. I need your help. Just raise up your hand and we're going to pray for you. Is there one like this? You say, yes, 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 yes. You know, we want family members, we want parents, we want them to know the Lord Jesus as well. Does anyone else? You say, yes, yes. Thank you for those hands. You may just put it down. There's another group of people. Maybe you are here today. You need healing. You need a miracle in your life. Not necessarily physical healing. But it might be mental. It might be an area in your life where you say, Oh, I'm discouraged. I'm in a state of depression. I'm in a state of suffering, quote and unquote. But yet, after hearing this miracle, you say, Lord, I, want, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. It is like the church member that I mentioned, crying out to God, God, I need you. I need you. I need you. I'm in a crossroad right now. I do not know what, but I need you, Lord. You know, God knows. And if you need prayer today, you need the touch of God, like the born, this man born blind. Jesus has touched him. Just one touch. And his life has never been the same. He said, Lord, I need you. Just raise up the hand. We'll remember you in prayer. That's right. You know, there are many hands raised. I know time is up. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, I do not want the Holy Spirit to be missed in terms of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to do that work in your life. And those of you who need healing very quickly, I want you to just come to my, uh, my left over here. It's, it's, it's actually your right. Very quickly, just come. Just come very quickly. Those who need healing, uh, whatever it is, just come and just stand here. The ministry leaders is going to lay hands and pray for you. But those who are praying for salvation or family members or loved ones, uh, stand on my right. And it's actually on your left. Just stand here. Just stand here. And uh, that's it. And I'm going to pass this time to Pastor Aris. He might just dismiss all of you. But those of you who are here, I want you to just, just be in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And just allow the Holy Spirit to do that work. Whatever it is, just cry unto the Lord. Just cry unto the Lord and over here likewise for salvation. Just, just pray that prayer. Pastor Aris is going to come and whether to dismiss all of you, I'll just leave it to him. But the rest, I'm going to ask ministry leaders, cell leaders, come, not me, come, you. You prayed for them. You lay hands and believe a miracle can happen. God is going to touch them. Likewise, over here, you pray. It's the Holy Spirit is going to do the work, not me, not Pastor Aris, but the Holy Spirit. You just pray, you just pray, and God is going to do the work in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to your feet. As we minister to these who are in front here, let's pray in tongues. Right? Since we are emphasizing on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray exactly the will of God for these lives that are here. Shalabakuri yalalabayanda. Come on, church, lift up your voice to pray in tongues. Kiri eri adarabakashuko, rabaya shika barabayanda. Kiri eri adarabaya shandu rabakashuko, rabayanda. Yeri adarabaya la roboku rabayanda la rabaya sha. Ramasi kiri bari rabakashuko, rabayanda. Reda la rabaya kurio da rabayanda. Yeda rabaya shandai. Touch those who need healing, O God. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Answer the prayers of those who are interceding for their loved ones. Shalabu rabai kariandai.
Kiriada Rabakushuko Borabaya Rabayana Kiria Rabakushakarabayana Shikaborabakushuko Robo Rabayande Yada Rabaya Sikiriandai Radia Rabaya Shuko Rabayandai Shikaborabaya Kiria the Rabaya Shuko Rabaya Karabayanda Rabaya La Rabaya Rabayandai Sarabarabakuriya <laughs> Shalabura bakara bayanda rebikuru yo yera bakashika barabaya rama marianda. We thank you, Father. Lord, this morning we thank you for the word of God. Thank you for speaking to our hearts and thank you, Lord. Even as many of us are praying for our family members, our relatives, to give their lives to you. I pray that you'll answer each and every one of our prayers. Help us to be bold, to share the Word of God with them. Lord, we'll live a life of example, a life look that will demonstrate you to them. We pray that whatever strongholds, whatever darkness that may blind their eyes, whatever things that are stopping them, it will all be removed in due time in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Melt their hearts, I pray. Speak to them and cause them to have faith in Jesus Amen. and they will confess you as their personal Savior, Lord, and they will bow their knees to you. We thank you. We believe it in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those who need healing, touch and heal them in Jesus' name. Whatever the ailments may be, whatever sickness that they're experiencing, we release the power of God upon them. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, dear Lord. Shalabarabaya Karabayandai Kiribala Barabai Baria Rabaya Sikiri and the Labarabaya Shandai Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's sing the song. Thank you, Father. Waiting. Abide in thy I pray Here I am longing For you I need your love Bring me to my know Jesus more and more. Come live in me all my life. Take over. Come breathe in me. I will draw us closer to you help us to live the life that honors you and glorifies you lord we have heard that these are the last days that we're living in 
God, that there are many people who do not know you. Lord, and without knowing you, that they have no place by your side. We pray that you will cause our hearts to beat with passion. Open our eyes to see the misery that they're in. That will compel us to move beyond our comfort. To move beyond, Lord, our regular uh, things that we do. Into, Lord, to know that they need Jesus and give us the boldness to bring Christ to them. We pray that through our ministry, through our personal sharing, Lord, our friends, our loved ones, our family members, strangers will bow and give their lives to you. And we ask, oh Lord, that you will help us to be fruitful in these last days. Even as a church, bless all of our evangelistic events and programs that we will see people coming to know Jesus. The Lord, as we come next week, we ask for the powerful move of the Spirit of God that you will empower us, that we will, God, be anointed to bring the gospel, Lord, to Kuala Lumpur, Lord, to all the states of Malaysia, to Southeast Asia, and to the regions beyond. So use us, we ask, and come in your powerful way. Lord, bless your people, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Daniel, Lord, for bringing the word.